Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture series on uh, integral equation under NPTEL course. In last lecture, we have discussed about how the linear boundary value problems can be converted into Fredholm integral equation. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss a special type of second order boundary value problems. Those are actually known as sturm liouville boundary value problem. And with the sturm liouville boundary value problem, we can see how the concept of Green's function will comes into the picture. And these Green's functions actually give us the solution for Fredholm integral equation. Now, before going to the solution of Fredholm integral equation with the method of Green's function, in this lecture, I am just going to quickly recapitulate the related theories of sturm liouville boundary value problem and the construction of Green's function for non-homogeneous second order boundary value problem with the separated boundary condition. So, the equations we are going to consider those are of this type that is d 2 y d x 2 plus a 1 x d y d x plus a 2 x y x this is equal to g x with the associated boundary condition that we have discussed in the last lecture was of this particular format. And you can recall if g x equal to 0 then this second order linear boundary value problem can be converted into Fredholm integral equation of homogeneous type and if g x is a non-zero function which is defined over the closed interval a comma b, then it can be converted into a Fredholm integral equation of second kind which is a non-homogeneous linear integral equation. Now, we are going to discuss about um, uh, the sturm liouville boundary value problem. sturm liouville boundary value problem. This sturm liouville boundary value problem actually defined as d d x of p x d y d x plus q x plus lambda r x y x this is equal to 0. For the time being we are considering homogeneous sturm liouville boundary value problem with the separated boundary conditions that is m 1 y a plus m 2 y dot a this is equal to 0 and m 2 y b sorry m 3 and m 4 y dot b this is equal to 0. So, you can see one boundary condition is defined at x equal to a other boundary condition is defined at y equal to b. So, that is why it is called separated boundary conditions and there is a restrictions on m 1 and m 1, m 2, m 3 and m 4 that for the first boundary condition m 1 and m 2 should not be simultaneously equal to 0 and m 3 and m 4 should not be simultaneously equal to 0. So, mathematically we can write that m 1 square plus m 2 square this is not equal to 0 and m 3 square plus m 4 square this is not equal to 0. Now, in this particular problem p dot x q x and r x these are all continuous functions these are all continuous functions for all x belongs to this closed interval a comma b lambda is a parameter and the function p x is non vanishing for 
all values of x belongs to a comma b. Now, the point is that this homogeneous integral equation can be simply written as in terms of an differential operator L y equal to 0, where this L y this stands for this operator d d x of p x d y d x plus q x plus lambda r x y. This is actually definition for this operator L operated upon y. Now, first of all I just like to draw your attention this operator L is a self adjoint operator, self adjoint differential operator. This means if we consider two functions y 1 x, y 2 x which are twice continuously differentiable functions, then we can find that y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 this d x is going to be an exact differential is going to be an exact differential. If a operator l satisfies this type of condition in case of differential operator if y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 d x is an exact differential then we can say that operator is a self adjoint operator. Now, quickly we can just try to verify this result. So, clearly y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 this is equal to d d x of p x for convenience we can write here y 1 dash x. Uh, this entire expression will be multiplied by y 2 this plus q x plus lambda r x this multiplied with y 1 x and this entire expression is multiplied with y 2 x minus d d x of p x y 2 dash x this plus q x plus lambda r x y 2 x this multiplied with y 1 x. And you can see that these two terms q x r x lambda r x q x plus lambda r x y 1 y 2 x and q x plus lambda r x y 2 y 1 x these two term cancels with each other. So, that means this will cancels with this one and therefore, we are left with the expressions that is d d x of d d x of p x y 1 dash x this quantity multiplied with y 2 x minus d d x of p x y 2 dash x this multiplied with y 1 x and this will be equal to that is y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 this will be equal to uh, if we differentiate these uh, expressions. So, it will be for the first part this is y 2 x d d x of p y 1 x. So, this will be this can be written as this is y 2 x this multiplied with p x y 1 double dash x plus p dash x y 1 dash x this one minus y 1 x into p x y 2 double dash x plus p dot x y 2 dash x and this will be equal to p x multiplied with y 2 x y 1 double dot x 
minus from here if we take the term with p x as common. So, this will be minus y 1 x y 2 double dot x this one plus p dot x this multiplied with y 1 dash x y 2 x minus y 2 dash x y 1 x. And now, we can easily verify that this expression is nothing but d d x of p x multiplied with y 2 x y 1 dot x minus y 1 x y 2 dot x, because keeping p x uh, without differentiating uh, here, if we differentiate this expression, then we will be having y 2 x y 1 double dot x plus differentiating y 2, we can find y 2 dash x y 1 dash x minus differentiating y 1, we will be having y 1 dash x y 2 dash x minus y 1 x into y 2 double dot x this and then differentiating p x and keeping rest of the term unchanged, it will be p dot x times y 2 x times y 1 dot x minus y 1 x times y 2 dot x and here these two terms cancels with each other. So, you can easily verify this resulting expression is nothing but what we have written for y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2. So, that means, we are getting the result that y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 this is equal to d d x of p x then y 2 x y 1 dot x minus y 1 x y 2 dash x this one and hence this expression y 2 l y 1 minus y 1 l y 2 this d x is an exact differential that is d of p x multiplied with y 2 x y 1 dot x minus y 1 x y 2 dot x. So, this is an exact differential for two functions y 1 and y 2 which are twice differentiable. Now, actually we have to use this result in order to construct the Green's function for the non-homogeneous boundary value problem. Now, before going to that part, I just like to draw your attention towards this type of problem that L y equal to g x, we have to solve this equation. For the time being, we are not at all considering anything about the initial condition or boundary condition. But for solution of this equation, you can recall that general solution of this equation y x can be written as superposition of two solutions y h x plus y p x, where y h x is actually uh, solution general solution of is general solution of the homogeneous equation l y this is equal to 0 and y p x this is known as particular integral. And since the given equation, since the given equation is a linear ordinary differential equation, therefore, using the superposition principle, we can find out the solution y x is equal to y h x plus y p x. 
and using the initial condition or boundary condition whatever provided for the given problem, we can calculate the unknown quantities C 1 and C 2 involved with y h x such that the solution y x satisfies the given differential equation L y x equal to g x with the specified initial condition or boundary condition. Now, here we are going to construct the Green's function for the problem L y equal to g x with the boundary conditions that is m 1 y a plus m 2 y dot a this is equal to 0 and m 3 y b plus m 4 y dot b this is equal to 0. So, these are the given conditions. Now, in order to derive the Green's function associated with the solution of this non-homogeneous boundary value problem, we are going to assume one important thing regarding the two linearly independent solution of the associated homogeneous problem. So, first of all we assume that y 1 x and y 2 x these are two linearly independent two linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation of the differential equation we can write here l y equal to 0. So, now our assumption is that neither y 1 x nor y 2 x satisfies both the boundary condition. If any one of them satisfies both the condition, then in order to obtain the solution for the given problem, we need some other restrictions and actually in order to derive this Green's function uh, with help of that solution of this equation, we are not interested to address any further restriction such that which will affect the solution of this problem. So, without inviting any further restrictions, we are going to solve this problem where our assumption is that y 1 x and y 2 x these are two linearly independent solution of the associated homogeneous equation L y equal to 0 and if y 1 x satisfies the boundary condition on the left, then y 2 will be satisfying the boundary condition on the right or vice versa. In due course of time, I will assume which function satisfies the boundary condition at which end. So, now we are going to solve this equation that means, we are going to find out a solution of this equation by the method of variation of parameters. So, as for method of variation of parameter, we assume solution of the equation will be of the form y x is equal to u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x. These are two unknown functions. Now, just one point I here I like to draw your attention. In this case, we are assuming that this y x equal to u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x is going to be the solution of the original given non-homogeneous problem. In this case, we are not uh, dividing it into two parts that is y h x plus y p x. In subsequent deduction, I will discuss why this assumption justifies the method that I am going to follow here. So, assuming this y x equal to this one, now we have to find out u 1 x and u 2 x in such a way that y x equal to this one is going to be solution of the non-homogeneous problem as well as this y x will be satisfying both the boundary conditions. Again, you have to keep in mind y 1 x and y 2 x are two linearly independent solutions. So, we have to choose this or we have to derive u 1 x and u 2 x such that this is a solution and boundary conditions y a uh, that is boundary condition at a and boundary condition at b will be satisfied, but none of y 1 and y 2 
is going to satisfy the boundary condition at the both end. So, first of all differentiating y x we can find y dot x equal to u 1 x y 1 dot x plus u 2 x y 2 dot x plus u 1 dot x y 1 x plus u 2 dot x y 2 x. Now, in order to solve a second order linear ordinary differential equation, we have introduced two unknown functions, but we are very much careful that we are not going to introduce or going to have two more second order ordinary differential equations for u 1 and u 2. In order to avoid that difficulty or that means, in order to find out this u 1 and u 2 these two unknown functions without solving a second order differential equation, we can make use of the assumption which is standard method for variation of parameters that is u 1 dot x y 1 x plus y 2 x u 2 dot x this is equal to 0 this is going to be y 2 x 1 this is equal to 0 call it 1 and with this assumption that is y u 1 dot x y 1 x plus u 2 dot x y 2 x equal to 0 we can find y dot x this is equal to u 1 x y 1 dot x plus u 2 x y 2 dash x. This is the expression for y dot x. Now, we calculate L of y with the y x equal to u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x and y dash x equal to u 1 x y 1 dash x plus u 2 x y 2 dash x. If we calculate L of y, so this will be equal to d d x of p x times y dot x plus q x plus lambda r x this into y x. Now, we are actually going to use the result for y dash x this will be equal to this one. So, this expression we are going to use and for y x we are going to use the result this one. So, substituting these two expressions we can find this is equal to d d x of p x with u 1 x y 1 dash x plus u 2 x y 2 dash x this expression plus q x plus lambda r x this entire quantity multiplied with u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x and this is equal to we can write d d x of u 1 x then p x y 1 dash x plus d d x of u 2 x p x y 2 dash x this one plus rest of the expression without writing x here that is q plus lambda r into u 1 y 1 plus u 2 y 2. I am not writing x here as the argument of the functions. Now, in first two differentiation we have to be little bit careful in order to use the result that y 1 and y 2 
are the solutions of the homogeneous linear ordinary differential equation. We consider the function which we have to differentiate as product of two functions with first function as u 1 x and second function as p x times y 1 dash x. So, with that particular assumption we can find this is equal to u 1 x then d d x of p x y 1 dash x this plus p x y 1 dash x times u 1 dot x. So, first of all we are not differentiating p x y 1 dash x, but we are writing u 1 x d d x of p x y 1 dot x. Similarly, for the second expression d d x of this one we can find this will be u 2 x multiplied with d d x of p x y 2 dot x plus p x y 2 dot x multiplied with u 2 dot x plus q x plus lambda r x this multiplied with u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x. Now, in order to apply the result that y 1 and y 2 are solution of the homogeneous equation, we have to rearrange these terms. First of all, we are going to take these terms together that is this expression u 1 x this one and then q x plus lambda r x multiplied with this u 1 x y 1 x, because from these two term we can take u 1 common and similarly from these expressions that is u 2 x d d x of this and this q x plus lambda r x multiplied with u 2 x into y 2 x. So, combining we can write this is equal to u 1 x this multiplied with d d x of p x y 1 dash x plus q x plus lambda r x this multiplied with y 1 x first term then plus u 2 x this d d x of p x multiplied with y 2 dash x plus q x plus lambda r x this multiplied with y 2 x and then we will be left with two terms that is p x multiplied with y 1 dash x u 1 dash x and p x multiplied with y 2 dot x u 2 dot x. So, this will be plus p x multiplied with u 1 dash x y 1 dash x plus u 2 dash x with y 2 dash x. Now, this expression that is d d x of p x y 1 dot x plus q x plus lambda r x into y 1 x this entire expression is nothing but l y 1. Now, y 1 is the solution of associated homogeneous differential equation. So, this expression is identically equal to 0. Similarly, d d x of p x y 2 dot x plus q x plus lambda r x into y 2 x this is also equal to 0. So, ultimately this expression is nothing but p x times u 1 dot x y 1 dot x plus u 2 dot x y 2 dot x. Now, if we claim that y x equal to y 1 x into uh, u 1 x plus u 2 x times y 2 x is going to be solution of the non homogeneous problem. So, therefore, we must have this L of y x is equal to p x multiplied with u 1 dash x y 1 dash x plus u 2 
dash x y 2 dash x this should be equal to g x, because this is the resulting expression for L y x and if y x equal to the assumed format u 1 y 1 plus u 2 y 2 is going to be a solution of the non homogeneous problem. Therefore, we should have this is equal to 0 and from here we can write that u 1 dot x y 1 dot x plus u 2 dot x y 2 dot x this is equal to g x by p x and here you can see the utility of our assumption that p x is not equal to 0 for all x belongs to the closed interval a comma b. So, that means now we can solve for u 1 dot and u 2 dot from this equation we can call this equation as 2 and then solving it with 1 we have to determine u 1 dot x and u 2 dot x. So, that means we are going to solve these two equations u 1 dot x y 1 x plus u 2 dot x y 2 x this is equal to 0 and u 1 dot x y 1 dot x plus u 2 dot x y 2 dot x this is equal to g x by p x. So, just by cross multiplication we can find that u 1 dot x this is equal to minus y 2 x g x this whole divided by p x into y 1 x y 2 dash x minus y 2 x y 1 dash x this expression and u 2 dash x that is equal to y 1 x g x divided by p x multiplied with y 1 x y 2 dash x minus y 2 x y 1 dot x this one. Now, we have to ensure that this quantity present in the denominator for the expression of u 1 dot x and u 2 dot x these are non zero and you can easily verify from the theory of ordinary differential equations that y 1 x times y 2 dot x minus y 2 x times y 1 dot x is nothing but the Ronskian of two functions y 1 x and y 2 x. And here we can easily prove that this quantity is a constant quantity, because L y 1 this is equal to 0, L y 2 this is equal to 0, y 1 and y 2 they are actually two linearly independent solutions of the corresponding homogeneous equation. And then from previous result we can easily derive that y 1 L y 2 minus y 2 L y 1 this expression is equal to 0 and from the previous discussion where we have uh, obtained the result for y 2 L y 1 minus y 1 L y 2. So, interchanging the role of y 1 y 2 we can derive here that y 1 L y 2 minus y 2 L y 1 this is equal to d d x of p x this multiplied with y 1 x y 2 dot x minus y 2 x y 1 dot x this is equal to 0. And as the derivative of this equal to 0, so therefore, we write p x multiplied with y 1 x y 2 dot x minus y 2 x y 1 dot x this is equal to a constant and for the time being we can call this particular constant 
is alpha. So, using this result that P x times y 1 x into y 2 dot x minus y 2 x into y 1 dot x equal to constant, we can write u 1 dash x this is equal to minus 1 by alpha y 2 x into g x and u 2 dot x this is equal to 1 by alpha y 1 x into g x, because the expression for u 1 dot x was minus y 2 x g x divided by the entire expression p x times y 1 x y 2 dot x minus y 2 x y 1 dot x. And since this is equal to constant alpha the denominator that is equal to alpha. So, we will be having this result u 1 dot x equal to this one and u 2 dot x equal to this one. Now, integrating this result u 1 dot x equal to this from some arbitrary constants say beta 1 to x we can write u 1 x this is equal to minus 1 by alpha integral beta 1 to x y 2 s g s d s and similarly u 2 x this is equal to 1 by alpha integral beta 2 to x y 1 s g s d s. Now, we are going to derive the constants beta 1 and beta 2 such that the boundary conditions will be satisfied by y x at the two ends that is at x equal to a and at x equal to b. So, if we uh, write the left end boundary condition going to satisfy by uh, y. So, that means we must have m 1 y a plus m 2 y dot a this is equal to 0. So, now we have the expressions for y and y dot. So, this implies we will be having m 1 times u 1 a y 1 a plus u 2 a y 2 a. This is the condition that is y a and using the result for m 2 you can recall what we have uh, used we have derived uh, here that is y dot x equal to u 1 x y 1 dash x plus u 2 x y 2 dash x. We can find this will be m 2 times u 1 a y 1 dot a plus u 2 a y 2 dot a this is equal to 0. Now, rearranging that means taking u 1 a and u 2 a common we can find u 1 a this multiplied with m 1 y 1 a plus m 2 y 1 dot a this expression plus u 2 a multiplied with m 1 y 2 a plus m 2 y 2 dot a this is equal to 0. Now, without any loss of generality at this point we are assuming that y 2 x satisfies the boundary condition at the left end that is at x equal to 0. So, that means we are assuming that m 1 y 2 a plus m 2 y 2 dot a this is equal to 0. Already we have discussed that this y 2 once satisfied the boundary condition on the left. So, uh, it should not be satisfying the boundary condition on the right and similarly y 1 a at this moment is not satisfying the boundary condition on the left. So, therefore, assuming m 1 
y 1 a plus m 2 y 1 dot a this is not equal to 0. From this expression we have u 1 a this is equal to 0. I repeat this argument again we are assuming that y 2 is satisfying the boundary condition on the left. So, therefore, y 2 will not be satisfying the boundary condition on to the right. So, therefore, right end boundary condition will be satisfied by y 1 and we have already mentioned that either of y 1 and y 2 will satisfy the boundary condition at one ends. So, therefore, y 1 is not allowed to satisfy the boundary condition on the left end point as we have assumed that y 2 satisfies the boundary condition on the left end. So, therefore, m 1 y 1 a plus m 2 y 1 dot a this is not equal to 0 and m 1 y 2 a plus m 2 y 2 dot a this is equal to 0. So, combining this quantity this result m 1 y a plus m 2 y dot a equal to 0 will be satisfied whenever u 1 a equal to 0. Now, if you recall the expression for u 1 x what we have written earlier then u 1 a is nothing but minus 1 by alpha integral beta 1 to a g s uh, g s y 2 s d s g s y 2 s d s. Now, this will be equal to 0 whenever this beta 1 this is equal to a. So, with this result we can write that y 1 x is equal to minus 1 by alpha integral a 2 x g s y 2 s d s. So, u 1 x we have obtained here. Now, we have to find out y 2 x. So, using the boundary condition on the right end that is m 3 y b plus m 4 y dot b this is equal to 0 we will be having m 3 u 1 b y 1 b plus u 2 b y 2 b using the expression for y x equal to u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x plus m 4 this will be u 1 b y 1 dot b plus u 2 b y 2 dot b this is equal to 0. Again rearranging the terms we can find u 1 b m 3 y 1 b plus m 4 y 1 dot b plus u 2 b this multiplied with m 3 y 2 b plus m 4 y 2 dot b this is equal to 0. Now, in the previous step we have assumed that y 2 satisfies the boundary condition on the left end. So, therefore, as per our assumption m 3 y 2 b plus m 4 y 2 dot b this is not equal to 0 and y 1 is going to satisfy boundary condition on the right end. So, that means m 3 y 1 b plus m 4 y 1 dot b this is equal to 0. So, substituting these two results here we can find that u 2 b this is equal to 0. Now, using the expression for u 2 x we can find that u 2 b this is equal to 1 by alpha integral beta 2 to b g s y 1 s d s 
this is equal to 0 and this implies beta 2 this is equal to b and hence we can write that u 2 x this is equal to 1 by alpha integral b 2 x g s y 1 s d s and that is equal to minus 1 by alpha integral x to b g s y 1 s d s. So, just remember these two expression that is u 1 x equal to minus 1 by alpha integral a to x g s y 2 s d s and u 2 x equal to minus 1 by alpha integral from x to b g s y 1 s d s this is obtained using the condition that y x satisfies the boundary condition on the left and boundary condition on the right and we have obtained earlier the expressions for u 1 dot x and u 2 dot x using the condition that y equal to u 1 y 1 plus u 2 y 2 is a solution of the non homogeneous equation. So, if we now just summarize these results, so with the assumption y x is equal to u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x this y x we are assumed is going to be solution of the self adjoint non homogeneous linear differential equation this one. And from here first of all we have derived the differential equations for u 1 and u 2 and we have obtained the expression for u 1 x this is equal to minus 1 by alpha integral a 2 x g s y 2 s d s this expression and u 2 x this is equal to 1 by alpha integral minus here x to b g s y 1 s d s these two expressions we have obtained by using the boundary conditions that is y a m 1 plus m 2 y dot a this is equal to 0 and m 3 y b plus m 4 y dot b this is equal to 0. So, that means combining we can write this y x is equal to the solution u 1 x y 1 x plus u 2 x y 2 x is the solution of this non homogeneous boundary value problem and it is given by minus y 1 x by alpha integral a 2 x g s y 2 s d s minus y 2 x divided by alpha integral x to b g s y 1 s d s. So, taking this expression under the integral sign we can write minus integral a 2 x g s multiplied with y 1 x y 2 s by alpha this d s minus integral x to b g s this multiplied with y 2 x y 1 s divided by alpha d s. So, now we can define a function g x comma s that will be denoted by g x comma x which follows the definition y 1 x times y 2 s divided by alpha when s is less than equal to x and it satisfies the definition y 2 x times y 1 s divided by alpha whenever s is greater than x. So, defining this function g x comma s in this way this is equal to y 
2 s y 1 x divided by alpha this condition is satisfied for a less than equal to s less than x and here we are writing this x is less than equal to b because our range of interest is from a to b and then it is y 1 s y 2 x divided by alpha whenever in general we can write this uh, x less than s less than equal to b and here we are introducing that this a is less than equal to x. So, with this definition for g x comma s we can write the solution to the boundary value problem is given by minus integral a to b g of x comma s g s d s this is a solution for the non homogeneous boundary value problem which is a strum liouville boundary value problem. Now, in some of the books you can find that this minus sign absorbed into the definition of g of x comma s and in that case minus sign will not appear here. There are various books which have discussed the construction of Green's function in order to solve the non homogeneous boundary value problem, but this approach that I have presented uh, here or you can say adopted here is taken from the book by Jerry and name of the book is introduction to integral equations and applications by A J Jerry. So, this is the solution of the boundary value problem that is non homogeneous boundary value problem. So, just to recapitulate quickly what we have done today. So, first of all we have considered the self adjoint operator and then we have considered the strum liouville boundary value problem which is defined by L y equal to g x where L y is equivalent to d d x of p x y dot x plus q x plus lambda r x this into y x satisfying the boundary condition that is m 1 y a plus m 2 y dot a this is equal to 0 and m 3 y b plus m 4 y dot b this is equal to 0 and solution of this non homogeneous boundary value problem can be written as y x is equal to minus integral a to b g of x comma s g s d s where g x comma s is the Green's function which is defined in this way g x comma s in this way this is equal to y 2 s y 1 x divided by alpha this condition is satisfied for a less than equal to s less than x and here we are writing this x is less than equal to b because our range of interest is from a to b and then it is y 1 s y 2 x divided by alpha whenever in general we can write this uh, x less than s less than equal to b and here we are introducing that this a. So, this is the solution and most important point that we can realize from here apart from this unknown quantity alpha how to derive this alpha that we will be discussing in the next lecture that if we know two linearly independent solutions of the associated homogeneous equation. So, we can directly write down this function g x comma s which is actually known as the Green's function and in terms of these two linearly independent solution of the 
homogeneous equation you can write down the solution of the non homogeneous boundary value problem. So, today we can stop at this in the next lecture we will be considering some more properties associated with this Green's function and direct application to verify that yes this G, uh, Green's function gives us solution to the non homogeneous boundary value problem. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.